Hi everyone, David Maley here and today I'm going to show you some really cool stuff to do with linear regression and correlations. Now we're not going to do any fancy graphs or anything like that today. I have those in my other uh, videos on my channel. You can go look at those and feel free to look at the ggplot ones and the various uh, distribution plots and everything else, uh, analytical visuals and stuff like that. But today what we're going to do is I'm going to, we're going to start with correlations and seeing if something has correlations. Then what we're going to do is build a linear regression model based on that. So first off, if you see this first line up here, number 427, we have library, read Excel. Okay, you can use that. There's also an XLSX one. Any of these that reads from Excel you want to use, we're going to, in this, because in this case we're pulling in our data set from Excel. So here's how I uh, access that. Underneath it, I take and I read a file right here, and I read it into this vector called test data 3 It's a data frame. So you can see here it has 731 observations of 16 variables. I can go here, click on it, take a look at it. This is the data in there. This, again, is the bike share data set available at the University of California, Irving. Um, it's a free thing to use. It's at their data science collection, and you can access that online. Here is the uh, uh, different... Um, columns or fields available. We're going to be looking at count, wind speed, temperature. We could look at humidity if we wanted to, but we're just going to stick with count, which is your total rentals or total sales. Temperature, this you multiply this by uh, 100 and you get the actual true temperature for the day. So 0.36 means 36 degrees. Uh, that's the way they created the data set and it's available on day to day is the date. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and take a look here. And we've now we've gonna we're gonna load that in, or we actually already did. So here it is right here. If I wanted to load it in, all I have to do is highlight this and hit Control and Enter, and it would run it in. If I hadn't added the library, do the same thing here. Next, what I want to do is I'm gonna get correlations. So uh, maybe what we want to do, if I don't have all the field names in front of me, I might want to do this and take the name, you know, of our uh, data frame, and there it is and run this. What this will do is this little command right here will give me the uh, field names. So I have them right below here. I can see, okay, maybe I want to look at correlations between count and temperature. That's what we're going to do first. So you see count right there, temperature right here. Um, you know, I'm also going to look at wind speed against temperature. And there's a reason why I'm doing that. So let me highlight both these and I'm going to run both these for you. And see the correlation. So with a correlation analysis, what you want to do is you want to approach one. Uh, if you want to look at a negative correlation, you want to approach negative one. What that means is the closer to one, the stronger the correlation. The closer to negative one, the stronger the negative correlation. What that means is that as something goes up, the other one goes down relative to that. And the other one, if it's approaching one, that means as the one field goes up, the other one goes up very close and similar. So correlations are something you can work with here in linear modeling. So uh, in this case, you look at the data here, we have a great correlation. You're not going to necessarily get ones, and one, a, a correlation of one could mean something meaningless. So for instance, if I put temp against a temp here, I would probably have a one because a temp is the actual temperature versus the temperature, so that might be the uh, index, heat index, you know, where it's like the humidity adds a couple degrees to the actual temperature. Uh, that's what that is, or it would be the real feel temperature. So that would be close to a one, and it's not really going to give us what we want. In this case, what you would probably want with this data set is to see the total sales against temperature, because we know temperature affects the total sales, and uh, it's seasonal. So by looking at this, you know this one's a good one. This one is a very low negative. Uh, correlations so that's basically useless here and there's a reason why I want to show you that one so when we go into the linear models that's this LM and you pick the uh, two fields that you want you don't pick more than two because you have to have a matrix to that so in this case we have a data frame we're just putting temp versus count from the uh, test data 3 which is where we put this this data frame right here where we loaded in the Excel file and the one below it is this guy right here read our linear regression model 2 which is wind speed against temperature so I want to show you both of these this is the one we're going to be using temperature versus count but I want to show you both of these on purpose so if I run this right just like this and I hit control and enter you see that they loaded up for both of these models now and they both have a list of 12 items in there 
But what I want to do next is I want to, printing it doesn't really give you the full gist of what you want. It gives you a coefficient, intercepts, and count. But what I really want is the summary of both. So let's do this. Let's do a summary of both. Let's do a summary first of the, the first one. Okay. And what that does is it gives me a bunch of information, but the most important part in a linear regression model is the R squared and especially the adjusted R squared. You usually find they're pretty close. So right here at the bottom above F statistic is multiple R squared, right here of 0.3937, and then we have adjusted R squared of 0.3929, okay? Now what you want is as high as you can close to one. Obviously one is gonna be perfect. So as more, uh, you select more things or you play with your data and uh, fix your data, you know, you'll see later on we have other uh, videos on data wrangling, you can get this number higher. But right now we're not gonna be doing that, we're just running the models. So that was for one, now, and that was temperature versus count. Okay, now let's run it for number two, which was, remember, wind speed versus temperature. Now look at that. See how the R squared is bad here? It's very, very low. It's basically useless. So um, that's why we don't want to use the uh, wind speed versus temperature. We want to use temperature versus count. It doesn't have the highest. It's at 0.392 as we showed. But we can get higher if we want to. Look at this one right here. So we got linear regression model 3 um, where I'm putting sales versus cost. I want to show you this. And watch what happens here. I create and build it built it over here. Then what I'm going to do, let's just move this down a little bit so we can see everything a little bit clearer. And let's go take the summary of it. Look at how high that adjusted R squared and that multiple R squared is. 0.98. Almost one. Because sales and cost are right in line with one another. If I did them for the correlations, I would find a near perfect correlation between them. Um, we could actually put that in here if we wanted to. So count would be the sales and what was cost? Some, some cost. We could put that in there if we wanted to and it would give us close to one. I'm not going to do that right now. But regardless, um, so that shows you you could have a very high R squared, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to give you the data that you want. So uh, the, from this one, the one that I want to use, if I'm going to use a linear regression model, would definitely be the 0.392, which is the uh, number one, I believe. Let's run that again. And here it is. Yep, 0 0.392, 0 0.393, basically. So that one's the interesting one, and we could actually plot that, get some graphs out of that with ggplot, and I've got that in my other videos. But basically here, I just wanted to quickly show you how we do correlations real quick and fast. And you saw that. I could use any of the fields. I can use the SDR function here to go and list whatever fields I want from my data set once I've loaded it in. And then I can take these data, these fields and compare them to one another. Maybe what I want to do is day to day and sales. That would be an interesting one. Let's try that one real quick here because we've got a little bit of time here. Let's put that in there. And what do we say? Sales. So sales is count. So let's try that one for a correlation. Right? Let's just see. Remember what the other ones were? Oops. It has to be numeric. Okay. So we can't do a correlation based on that one. That would be nice, but we can't do that. Okay. So leave that one to temperature versus count. And uh, But that's basically how it works. You just have to have numeric fields, as you can see right here. I could change that to numeric if I wanted to. I'm not sure what it is right now. It's probably string. Actually, you know what? It'll probably tell me right here. And there it is. It is not a numeric field. Everything else is. So I could use anything. I could use humidity. Uh, let's try that just for giggles. Let's try humidity and try that against count. Let's just try that and see what that does. That's how quick and easy you can just go get quick correlations here. Boom, there it is. That's not a very good correlation. So humidity against count is not, but maybe humidity against temperature is. I don't know if that'd be useful or not, but let's just see. I'm sure it is. Well, it's a positive but slight. So it's a very small correlation compared to the other one. So you can play around with the different fields, see where the correlations lie, and then you want to see what where it me makes sense, what would have meaningful data to you. Obviously plotting um, sales versus cost 
in this case probably wouldn't mean anything, but it may. It depends on the data set, it depends on what you're trying to do. So the last line here is just when you're done. Um, this guy, oops, we're going too fast here, there we go. This remove line, basically RM is removed, so I could remove these and load another one, change them, do what I want to do with them. And again, at the top, just to go through this, there's the uh, library where we wrote, load in the, uh, the uh, this is the read Excel um, package. Uh, you can also do that through your packages here if it's listed and you've loaded in. Uh, let's see, where would it be? It'll show you read. There it is, read Excel. Um, and there's some other ones too that you could use. I believe there's an XLSX one. Um, let's see, it should be at the beginning here. Uh, I'm not sure where it is. Well, there is one in there anyway. So you can use that one. There's other ones you can use. Um, and then you just load in your data set, whatever it is. As long as it's in Excel, you can load it right in, put, pump it into a uh, vector, into a date, which becomes a data frame and then take a look at it. Hit the STR uh, function right here, take a look at it, see what the different fields are as you saw there. Um, look at the actual, you know, it's neat as it gives you actual data uh, to the right of it, samples, your field type and the names. And um, then you can just pipe them in and just look at the correlations, look at the, uh, the regression model with uh, linear regression model with LM, just like I showed you here. Use your summary to figure out the R-squared values. That's really helpful. And uh, there you have it. That's how you do a linear regression model. And then you can go and plot it and make some cool graphs on it and go and figure out where it, you know, you can do forecasting with this and forecast, you know, the future of different uh, uh, data sets and data values and fields, you know, over time series with high, uh, you know, uh, high predictability and uh, high confidence um, depending on what you're using. Well thanks again for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Um, it's not as pretty as the graphing stuff that I do in some of my videos, but this is the underlying stuff that's really cool and you can actually predict the future with it uh, depending on if a linear regression model fits your data better or any of the other types of predictive models out there like ARIMA, ETS, and who knows what else. There's random tree forest, all those things. We're going to do all these things in different uh, videos shortly, but this is the big key one to get started to launch lift off with here is linear regression models. They are useful in helping to show lift of campaigns and sales year over year and various things like that. So thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe and like down below so you can get notified of all my other great videos I have coming out. And uh, plus, you know, check, feel free to check out my channel. I've got a lot of great videos out there on predictive analytics, data science, data analytics, uh, or data analysis, Excel, advanced functions in Excel, um, forecasting in Excel, forecasting in other different languages, um, Altrix, all kinds of great stuff out there for you to use. And, uh, you know, have at it, learn some fun things, and uh, you'll learn that playing with data and data can be fun. It can be interesting. Get all kinds of cool insights out of it. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like and have a great day.